Greetings. I am your host for Encounter, Alfredia Victoria Flowers, Evangelist Flowers. And so I just want to just encourage you to just glean from what I'm going to share today. We've been talking about different encounters in this series that people have had with God Almighty. And most recently, we've been, I've been sharing my personal encounters from the book that I've written entitled Accepted, My Story and Workbook. And it's available on Amazon. And I've just, I've been sharing some things that have been very personal, but also, oh God, brought me from a place of rejection to accepting his love and accepting myself. And if any of you or you know someone else that's in that situation, I encourage you to invite them to be open to receiving the acceptance that God has for you. So I'm going to read a pray first, and then I'm going to read a disclaimer because I'm not a, I'm telling my testimony and my experience. I'm not a professional counselor, anything like that. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ as my savior and Lord and sharing what he's done for me. So we'll pray and then we'll get started. Father, thank you that you love us so much, so much. Head of both sides. Thank you so much. You love us so much that when we chose to be disobedient, when we chose to not follow you, you still loved us so much that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to live a sinless life, yet die a sinner's death in our place. And we say thank you. Thank you for your plan of salvation. Thank you that you didn't give up on us. Thank you, Father, that we each individually have an opportunity to accept your plan of salvation, restoring to us the fellowship and relationship that you desire to have with man from the beginning with Adam and Eve, when you walk through the garden and talk with them, walk with us and talk with us is our heart desire, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come Holy Spirit with more of your presence, more of your presence. Give us eyes to see what you're showing, ears to hear, and hearts that understand are converted to your will and to your way. Come ministering angels and minister even as we speak and teach. Oh, Holy Spirit, let your comfort sweep through the airways in the name of Jesus. Oh, we just declare wholeness coming forth today in Jesus' name. There is no distance with you, almighty God. We send the word of healing, deliverance, freedom and salvation to the people in Jesus name. Now I'm going to put up the disclaimer. I am not a counselor or medical doctor. The information in accepted workbook, a road to acceptance or accepted my story is not meant to replace seeking professional help. If you're receiving professional help for physical, emotional, or mental illness, continue to do so until you're released from their care. Accepted my story and accepted workbook, A Road to Acceptance. Share some of the tools I used on my road to self-acceptance. The tools helped me take hold of the acceptance that God provided for me. They may help you too, but I take no responsibility for your outcome. And as I, you know, as I read the disclaimer, I was talking about the books. The This is Accepted, My Story. It is written as a testimony. And then the Accepted Workbook came about because sometimes we tell what God has done, but we don't tell the process. And for me, it wasn't instant. It was truly a process. So you can buy those separately, or I have combined them in one, one volume accepted my story and workbook. And so you'll find the first half is my story and the second half is the workbook. Both are available. You can get them separately or together. So now that I've shared that with you, we're going to just jump right in. I'm going to review quickly what we've kind of, some of the things I've already shared. This will give, they'll give you some hints if you have not been listening or watching some of the things we've already covered. 
rejected at conception. Moving away from rejection, school days, born again, a healing miracle, a stranger's question, a turn of events, running for our lives, identity loss, seeking identity and acceptance, baptized in the Holy Spirit, secret society, accepting God's way, marriage on the rebound, accepting people, lust and loneliness, poems on the path to acceptance. I cried, mama, my first love, DNA daddy, hope for acceptance. Someone knew my pain. That was the last one that we did. Now we're on part 12, which we're, go we're going to share from Broken Heart Mended. But before that, I want today to do it a little differently before I share that. I want to share from the workbook because in the workbook on the last, the last video, we share accepting Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. And once you have done that, what we're going to share today is so important. It's knowing your identity in Christ Jesus. Because if the enemy of our soul cannot keep us from being accepting Jesus as Savior and Lord, he then tries to keep us from knowing our identity. He even did it to Jesus. He said, if you be the Son of God, knowing he was the Son of God. So that he tries to put that little doubt. But I want you to know your identity in Christ Jesus. So we're going to read this first, and then we will go to my testimony. If Jesus Christ is your Savior and Lord, you have a new identity. It is important to know what the Holy Bible says about your identity in Christ Jesus. You are now part of the kingdom of God. While you still live on the earth, you're part of the family of God while you still live on the earth. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new create creature. He's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 17. That's King James Version. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives, liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, for who, who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Again, King James. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Again, all of these are the King James. Lie not one to another, seeing that you put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Colossians chapter three, verses nine and 10. Not by works of righteousness that we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Titus chapter three, verse five. Whereby are given unto us exceedingly, exceeding great and precious promises that by these things ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Second Peter chapter one, verse four. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, who you have from God? You are not your own and you are not your own for you were bought with a price. Therefore, I glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. First Corinthians chapter six, verses 19 and 20. Now, this next part is just a prayer. You know, we've been doing the prayers that just... So I'm just going to today, because we're doing this first, you can meditate on this and go back and the scriptures, I'll give the scripture numbers again, but there are many more. You could just look in the Bible and find scriptures on in Christ, who you are in Christ, in him. And so we did 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, 
Galatians 2 and 20, Ephesians 2 and 10, Colossians chapter 3, verses 9 and 10, Titus chapter 3, verse 5, First Peter, excuse me, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4, and 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. And so let's just pick for a moment for a prayer. I'm going to just lead us in prayer and then we're going to go back into the lesson. But you can meditate on these and just really get a hold of your identity in Christ. We are new creatures. We are born again. We are bought with the price. We are beloved of God. We are the sons and daughters of God. We are heirs and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, your son, reveal to us in a fresh new way our identity in Christ Jesus. Now I'm going to read Broken Heart Mended. I want to leave that page. I closed it I want because we're going to come back at the end and do another one. Broken Heart Mended. The King James Version of Ephesians chapter 1, verses 5 and 6, and Isaiah chapter 53, verses 3 through 5, helped me realize God accepted me through Jesus Christ. They helped me receive mending from my broken heart that Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 3 talked about. In Luke chapter 4, Jesus Christ himself said he fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 3. His love, acceptance, mending, healing, and even wholeness continued after his death and resurrection. It continued through the born-again believers even in the 21st century. Through the years as a born-again believer, I have served as a daughter, a sister, a wife, a mother, a teacher, an evangelist, and a chaplain. From time to time through the years, I reminded myself who God said I was as part of the body of Christ. The reminder of what was important to God came through scripture. Sometimes the reminder and encouragement came through hymns and spiritual songs. One such hymn was Blessed Assurance. Now the next part is just entitled Blessed Assurance. In 1876, Fanny Lou Kramer wrote the lyrics for Blessed Assurance. The music from the hymn was composed by Phoebe Knapp. Fanny Kramer became physically blind from six weeks of age, but her spiritual insight and vision were strong. The phrase in the song, this is my story, this is my song, Praising my Savior all the day long reflected my heart's desire. The lyrics reminded me that as a born-again believer, I have been accepted through Jesus Christ. That song reminded me that praising God drew more of his presence. His presence was the place where God intended for every person from time to time. That man lived in the garden from the time that man lived in the garden. Praising God with my whole heart often led me into worship, no matter what happened in my personal life. Worship was a posture that invited more of the glory of God. Thanksgiving, praise, and worship often deepened my awareness of God's love and acceptance through his son, Jesus Christ. I meditated on the words of blessed assurance as I sang. I pondered the meaning of John 3, the third chapter, verses 15 through 17. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses six, 5 and 6 aloud frequently. They often reminded me not to allow feelings of rejection to stop me from embracing acceptance in the beloved, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ gave his life for you and for me to be accepted by the Father. I focused on those things. They opened my heart up to embrace acceptance from God more fully. I sensed a deeper intimacy with God. I allowed the Holy Spirit to help me press 
into deeper fellowship with God. It's available for you too. Mm. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. If you've accepted Jesus as your savior, he is yours and you are his. You are his. You are his. He's the good shepherd that laid down his life for the sheep. Mm. His father is yours. The Holy Spirit. You have a newborn again spirit. And he, uh, through the word of God, we, we the, the, the old soul, spirit, because we're spirit, soul, and body. The old soul and the body can be renewed, can be renewed through the word of God. The word of God is medicine according to the word. The word of God renews and changes our mind. That's what it is. Causes our thoughts and our will, our emotions to come in line with the word of God, the will of God. I'm going to read this next part too. Allowing the Holy Spirit to help. All of the things that I shared about being accepted in the beloved Jesus Christ are available to you too. Allow the Holy Spirit to help you receive God's acceptance. This includes accepting yourself, yet pressing in to walk in the fruit of the Spirit and demonstrating love and forgiveness. God desires us to utilize the power of the Holy Spirit to lovingly expand his kingdom on the earth. Born again believers, let us walk in the authority of Jesus Christ to minister salvation, healing, deliverance, and miracles as the power of the Holy Spirit flows through us as born again believers. There is power in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, son of the living God. When we're born again believers, Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. We become born again. We receive, when we become born again, we receive new spirits untouched by sin. We are to work out our soul salvation by following the leading of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will guide us to obey God out of love for him. Receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit will expand the presence of God within, upon, and working through us. Receiving God's acceptance is part of working out our soul salvation. Meditating on the word of God in this area helps us renew our minds. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16 declares that born again believers have the mind of Christ. It's up to us to separate the mind, to ex- to operate in the mind of Christ, operating in the mind of Christ and speaking aloud the word of God concerning being accepted by the love will help dispel the lies that we have believed about ourselves and God. It may move us to repent, change our minds, come into agreement with God. It may lead us to confess sins and trust God to help us walk in the victory over sin that Jesus Christ gained for us. Mm. Amen. That's powerful. I'm going to read accepting. I think I should read this one first, though. I'm going to read accepting uh, yourself. And then next time we'll start in with prayer to embrace acceptance. Accept yourself. This is from the workbook. Accept yourself. But acceptance does not excuse sin. Acceptance is facing who you are and where you are naturally, emotionally, mentally, and physically. Acceptance is knowing you fall short of the glory of God in your flesh and seeking God's help as illustrated in Psalm 51 verses 1 through 13. Jesus Christ is the heavenly father's beloved son. Therefore, you need to accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord to receive acceptance in the beloved As Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6 declares, according to Isaiah 53, verses 3 through 12, Jesus Christ is rejected. Galatians 3, verses 13 and 14 says, Jesus Christ is crucified for us. Thus, you can be accepted by Father God in Jesus Christ. Let us, let these truths sink in. (laughs) Accept it through Jesus Christ. Making Jesus Christ your personal Savior and Lord is is the beginning of acceptance in Christ Jesus. The process involves facing your mistakes and turning them over to God as an act of repentance. 
ask God to forgive you of the sins that the Holy Spirit brings to your mind. Release sins to God. Believe, be cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ is not your Lord and Savior, now is a good time to invite him to do so. If the sins you committed are based upon addictions, ask yourself if you're ready to let go of the sinful practices. Be honest with yourself. If you want to continue sinful practice for some reason, honestly talk to God about it. Philippians 2 and 13 implies that God can help you want to please him if you allow him, if you allow him to. If you're ready to let these sinful practices go, ask God if there, if there are demonic components to the addictions. If Jesus Christ is your Lord, your Savior and Lord, ask God, Father God, to deliver you from the addiction or cast out the demonic spirits in the name of Jesus Christ, as Mark chapter 16, verses 15 through 20 says. Then ask the Holy Spirit to fill the places where the demonic spirits were. Keep submitting to God, resisting the devil, drawing near to God as James chapter 4, verses 7 and 8 demonstrates to you. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, your son, please forgive me for mistakes that I've committed that were known and unknown to me. Help me forgive myself for the mistakes and sin. But this one, I think I'm just going to, it's such a powerful prayer. I am going to just say part of it and you can repeat it and then just continue to pray on at the, as I close. But first, I just want to pray for you and then we'll end with this. Father, we thank you that you have a powerful plan of salvation. And I declare today is the day of deliverance and salvation for those struggling with certain areas in their life. Even if they've already accepted you as Lord and Savior, but are struggling with addictions, I declare today is the day of freedom in Jesus' name. Help them to come out of agreement with the sin, the sin or the need for the sin and choose you. Today we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Son of the living God, and so you can find these prayers if you want to go back and see this. This I'm going to put this on my webs, my um, YouTube channel, Alfredia Flowers. And so you can go back and look at this and re just revisit this. But now we're going to close with prayer. Remember, God loves you. I love you too. Father God, repeat after me. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, your son, please forgive me for mistakes and sins that I committed that were known and unknown to me. Help me forgive myself for my mistakes and sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Deliver me from addiction and fill those places with the Holy Spirit. Feel me to overflow with the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed.